Uh, good evening, well, good morning uh, to you in South Africa and England and wherever you might be. Can you hear and see me clearly? Good morning, good morning, Pastor. Uh, again, your uh, volume is a bit low. Okay. What about now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Oh, praise God. I want to thank you, Sister Kenisa, for your wonderful introductions. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Yes, please. Thank you. You're welcome. And I thank for all the prayers of all those online tonight. I really think God has a word for somebody. Um, I, I may hear about it, I may not, but I know somebody will be blessed tonight. Uh, tonight, we were looking again at the topic on giants, generated, initiated, automatic, negative thoughts. And uh, we will go to the Bible, 1 Samuel chapter 17, 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we would reflect on three verses, uh, 38 through 40. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he was assuaged to go, or he attempted to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. Giant, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for your holy word that's about to minister to us. Uh, thank you for not disappointing us the last two nights. Tonight, we expect a greater outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Your people are listening, Lord, for some comforting word to take them through this day. Somebody's facing a giant of some kind. And Lord, tonight, you're going to deliver somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray in advance for Christ's sake. Amen. Uh, the story is told of... Uh, Black Bart, who was a professional thief, and his name struck fear as he terrorized the Wells Fargo stage line. From San Francisco to New York, his name became synonymous with the danger of the frontier. Between 1875 and 1883, he robbed 29 different stagecoach crews. Amazingly, Bart did not even use a gun. He didn't fire a shot because a hood covered his face. No victim ever saw his face. He never took a hostage and was never trailed by a sheriff. Instead, Black Bart used fear to paralyze his victims. His sinister presence was enough to overwhelm the toughest stagecoach guard. And tonight we are facing a, a, a black Bart, a, a giant black Bart in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And just like this black Bart, he is terrorizing people. His face is hidden. He is big. People are scared just hearing his voice. But tonight I want to let us know that when we face our giants, when you face your giant, your experience must be different from others. We cannot afford to be paralyzed by fear. And here's why. If you are paralyzed by fear, three things will happen to you. One, fear will grip you. Two, two. <clears throat> Fear will strip you. And three, fear will whip you. Fear will grip you, it will strip you, and it will whip you. And so tonight, we want to give you three things that you can do to overcome your giants. Number one, to overcome your giants and be dauntless. 
you must have God's perception. Number two, to overcome your giants and have durableness, you must have God's protection. And number three, to overcome your giants and be doubtless, you must have Jesus's participation. Let's go quickly to point number one, First Samuel chapter 17. And verse 38, to overcome your giants and be dauntless, you must have God's perception. And Saul on David, I, I beg your pardon, bear with me, bear with me. We're in verse 33, we're in verse 33. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man from his youth. Can you see Saul's perception? Saul's perception is, 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 is that David is too young. Saul's perception is that David does not have the power or the might to defeat Goliath. And may I share with you that Saul is right? David is not fighting in his own armor, as we shall see. He is fighting in God's um, armor. And, but David is dauntless. Dauntless means you are not afraid. You're showing fearlessness and determination. To overcome your giants and be dauntless, you must have God's perception. Saul tried to put the spirit of fear into David, but David was dauntless. He showed fearlessness and determination. 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. David encountered Goliath in the path of faithful obedience. Have you ever found yourself Worshiping and praising God, being obedient to God, returning your tithes, uh, being on time at church, being in the choir, being a leader. And all of a sudden, here comes this giant, a health giant, a financial giant, an emotional giant. And you're wondering, Lord, I'm, I'm serving you. I'm in your will. Here is David. He's in God's will. He came on a mission to bring food for his brothers. But David has encountered Goliath in the path of faithful obedience. David didn't go looking for a fight for this battle. But do you know what? Even though David didn't go looking for the battle, he was ready for the battle. And tonight, can I share with somebody tonight? We are going to face battles as Christians. And even though we don't go looking for them, we should be ready for them. I remember some years ago when I was younger, you know, I did, I did martial arts. And when I first began doing martial arts, you know, I would be all excited. I was buff. And I would walk down the street almost looking for a fight. And I'm, I'm tense. And, but as, as I matured, I realized I didn't have to be tense because my training will kick in. Once the danger showed itself, I wish somebody would say, Amen, tonight I can probably hear you. We are told in Patriots and Prophets, page 645, the armies of Israel were in peril, and David had been directed by an angel to save his people. Despite the fact that David was on the path of obedience, his way was not without opposition. Somebody said the Christian life is a battle and a march. It's full of giants. And the Apostle Paul has encouraged us as believers to prepare for the battle. He says in Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wilds of the devil against the giants he would put in your way. So point number one was 
to overcome your giants and be dauntless, to be fearless, to be determined. You must have God's perception. Point number two, to overcome your giants and have durableness, you must have Jesus's protection. What does durableness mean? I'm glad you asked. Durableness means or implies power to resist destructive agencies. It means that you are capable of, of withstanding wear and tear. Have you ever felt that you have down to your last strength and your Lord already give up? God is saying tonight that to overcome your giant, you must have durableness. Look at verses 34 to 36. The Bible says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. And verse 36, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. David was dauntless. He believed he had the power to resist destructive agencies. God had protected him from the lion. God had protected him from the bear. And God will protect him from this giant. Notice that King Saul is trying to wear down David to discourage him. But David did not yield his faith in Jesus on the soul's blast of doubt and discouragement. David stated the basis for his faith, Jesus's protection in the past, outlining his victories against the lion and the bear through the power of God. Can I help us tonight? When we face our giants, and we think our back is against the wall. Just remember, when God gave you the victory over that lion in your life, when God gave you the victory over that bear in your life. Point number three, to overcome your giants and be doubtless, you must have Jesus's participation. To be doubtless means to be certain Verse 37 says, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. Notice that David did not boast of defeating his Goliath on his own, but with the participation of Jesus. David brought to the battlefield past victories over a bear, not months of paralyzing fear. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Somebody missed that. David brought to the battlefield past victories over a lion and a bear not months of paralyzing fear. Remember I told you at the beginning that fear will grip you. Fear will strip you and fear will whip you. For all these months, the army of Israel have been looking at their giant. They have been meditating on their giant. The Bible says by beholding, you become changed. They were beholding the fear. There was no faith, just fear. They were paralyzed by fear. May I have you tonight? Stop being paralyzed by your giant. Stop staring at your giant. Too many of us, when we have a problem, 
We keep focusing on the problem, not the problem solver. Ooh, that's an amen point. We focus on the problem, not the solution or the solution giver. May I help you? The more you focus on your problem, the bigger it appears. David was certain that the same Lord who had delivered him from those fierce animals, the lion and the bear, could also save him from the hand of the Philistine. You know, I'm not sure what kind of bear David killed. Maybe it was a black bear. But black bears, when they're standing on their hind feet, could almost be some of them nine feet tall and above. Here is Goliath, ten and a half feet. David is used to fighting giants. I am telling you, if you go back in the history of your mind, you will recall a time when you faced another Goliath and you didn't think you could be victorious, but God gave you the victory and you did not record it. You didn't set up a pillar. You didn't put it in a notebook to remember that the next time you met one of Goliath's brothers, another giant, how to defeat them. Let me ask you a question. What fierce giants has God delivered you from in the past? In the, in the book, Mount of Blessing, page 71, we are told this. The Father's presence encircled Christ, and nothing befell him but that which infinite love permitted for the blessing of the world. Here was his source of comfort, and it is for us. He who is imbued with the spirit of Christ abides in Christ. The blow that is aimed at him falls upon the Savior who surrounds him with his presence. Whatever comes to him comes from Christ. Your giant comes from Christ. He has no need to resist evil, for Christ is his defense. Nothing can touch him except by our Lord's permission. I wish somebody within the sound of my voice could believe this tonight. Nothing can touch you except by our Lord's permission and all things that are permitted work together for good to them that love God. Let me end with this story. Famed World War II tank commander, General George Patton said, courage is fear holding on a minute longer. Courage is fear holding on one minute longer. You know, if you give in to your fears, you are on the path to defeat. If instead you stand strong in spite of your fears, you are on the path to victory. And we must never forget that we are not in the battle against our giants alone. With the power of God on our side, we cannot be defeated. Giants, shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for showing up and showing out. We give you all the honor, all the glory and praise for the victory that somebody is getting tonight. Lord, let them testify in some way. Let somebody else know that if you do it for them, they can get the victory too. Somebody, Lord, tonight is about to crumple at the feet of their giant. They have been staring at their giant, but they have not consulted you with their giant. They have not, Lord, asked you to be dauntless and to seek your perception. Lord, somebody has not overcome their giants because they have not been, have had durableness and asked for your protection. Somebody tonight, Lord, have not gotten the victory over their giants because they have, been, have not been dauntless and asked for your participation in their fight with their giants. But Lord, tonight, as they heard your voice speak to them, they have come to you for strength. 
and the same victory that you will give David, as we shall see, Lord, give them tonight. In, in the name of Jesus, I claim it and I believe it. And all God's people say, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Rainbow. What a powerful sermon today. We should stop paralyzing ourselves uh, with problems. There's a problem solver. Ah, thank you, Pastor. Today we are on day 15 of the 40 days of prayer in preparation with the, of the general conference session. Um, I will invite Sister Silize Dube to take us to the throne of grace. Good morning, uh, children of my father. Today we are in day 15 of our 40 days of prayer. The word of the Lord is found in Hebrews 4 verse 12. It's reminding